In this video, I'm going to tell you about whether or not videos and podcasts are hurting or helping your hobby. I find it difficult to hobby in total silence. Admittedly, I rarely have total silence at our house. There's cats walking around, there's my wife making noise, doing things that, you know, just living her life. And so total silence is, uh, is a misnomer. What I'm talking about is I'm not listening to or absorbing some other kind of media while I'm working. There are times when I need to fix something quick. I'm going to be sitting here and fixing this piece of terrain where it got sort of beat up or mangled a little bit, and it's gonna take me five to 10 minutes. I'm not gonna sit down and try to figure out, well, what should I listen to while I work on this thing for five minutes? Or what kind of thing, you know, I, I just work on it in relative silence and it's fine. But if I'm gonna sit down to a hobby sesh, as the kids say, I'm gonna be needing to listen or absorb some or other kind of media while I work. And, over the years, a lot of different viewers have told me what like what they like to have on in the background while they hobby. Stuff from, you know, podcasts, videos, YouTube videos, television shows, movies, uh, music, all kinds of stuff like that. But not all media sources are equal when it comes to being on in the background while you hobby. It sounds great. There is nothing much better than an entire day off you know, spent hobbying and watching movies or shows or whatever. Like maybe, yeah, you know, you got no work today, but you did some chores or whatever in the morning, did some grocery, ran, you know, mowed the lawn, whatever. But then after that, you've got nothing that needs to take you away from sitting down and building models or painting models and watching movies or TV shows or whatever it is that you like. And in those situations, the, also the great thing about that is that you really don't have to worry at all about how long it'll take. You have the whole day to spend. That's the best case scenario. If you've got, you know, multiple jobs, multiple children, all kinds of things like that, you know how these best laid plans have a tendency to fall apart a little bit. But in a perfect world, there are days when you just get to do hobby and it's awesome. And you can be doing other things as well as, like I said, movies, you know, whatever, audio books. Um, and it sounds great, but as far as like the movies and the TV shows and things like that, I personally can't do that. I can't have a video, frankly, of any kind on and expect to get any hobby done. And especially for me these days, frequently you need to get stuff done on a deadline. Sometimes deadline is a strong you know, term. Unless you're like a commission painter, then you do generally have deadlines. You know, But if I'm talking about I'm not a commission painter, I may still need to have things done by a certain time. Maybe I'm going to a tournament. Maybe it's a local tournament at my store. Maybe it's a big tournament at a big convention like Las Vegas Open or Adepticon or Nova Open or something like that. And you got to have painted, finished stuff when you go there. It's not even like, a, oh, it's on my honor. I want to get it done. It's like in the rules. The TOs are like, yeah, your stuff's got to be painted. So when you have those situations, you do have a date on it. And again, if you're just painting with your friends and you want to get this cool piece of terrain finished, that's also great. But again, you guys are playing on Saturday and that's the way it works. And if you're anything like me, which you might be, you've probably procrastinated or potentially poorly planned and you don't have as much time as you would like. So that whole kind of pipe dream of just spending the day you know, watching movies or listening to things or doing whatever while your hobby is not helpful. You actually need to get stuff done. So you need to get it done and keep focus to get it done quickly. The important thing about that, in my opinion, is that knowing what kind of media will hinder that process for you is very important because you need to avoid it if you need to get things done. Now, when I'm talking about media, what am I talking about? Well, there's obviously lots of different types of media. Music is one. Some folks um, can't concentrate on too much audio text. So music like works great. They can't listen to like an audio book or they can't listen to a podcast or something like that while they're hobbying because they stop paying attention to it. And all of a sudden they're like, wait, what'd that guy say? And it depends on different people. People's brains are written different ways. So some people are just like, I can only just listen to background music when I am hobbying and that's fine. Uh, then the question comes down to lyrics or no lyrics. I can't write, whether it's like you know, regular normal copy, marketing copy, something like that, even emails sometimes, um, while I'm listening to lyrics or music with lyrics. I just can't do it. I certainly can't like write HTML code and stuff like that while listening to 
even techno with like limited music or lyrics or something like that, I just can't really focus as well as I should when even someone in the background is just vaguely kind of got some sort of lyrical stuff going on. So in those situations, I have to find stuff that's totally instrumental. And you may be fine with listening to lyrics while you're working on something, but other things may cause problems. But knowing what type of music, if that's what you like while you're working, knowing what you can find, and then using some sort of service that you can kind of limit things and say, oh, well, no, you know, all instrumentals, please, you know, from your Spotify or Pandora or whatever. That's actually really helpful. Now, podcasts. For me, podcasts are one of the sweet spots because some people, like I said before, can't focus on the podcast while building or painting. They just, they've got an internal monologue that's going on as they're working on these parts. Well, now I got to try to get this to fit and I got to do this and whatever. And then all of a sudden they stop listening to the people who are talking about true crime or whatever that you're listening to. Um, the downside for me is, I, well, hey, the upside is I don't have that problem. I can listen and absorb podcasts quite well for hours and hours and hours while working on a hobby. The downside is, is that I don't listen to a ton of different podcasts. I'm kind of fussy about my podcasts. And because of that, I have a tendency to go through the content pretty quickly and I get all caught up. And then I don't have tons of different podcasts to listen to because I go through them too quickly and then I run out of things to listen to. So that's sort of the issue with podcasts. But if you just like to listen to all kinds of different people talk, then podcasts can be great for that because they're generally free and there can be across a ton of different uh, interests of yours or potentially new things you've never even come across before. And you'll be able to have something. I mean, there are so many podcasts out there. You'll never run out. But if you're fussy like I am, you might. Another great sweet spot for me, audiobooks. Um, the big benefit, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, but the big benefit for me as well is that they have this added kind of aspect of motivation to them, right? Like I'm listening to this story and then I have to stop at some point. I'm listening to the story while I'm hobbying and now it's, I gotta go to bed or I gotta go to work or I gotta do something else and I have to stop for a bit. But now I'm thinking about the story that I'm listening to and I'm like, well, I wonder what happens next. What's this character gonna do? What's that character gonna do? That kind of thing. And so I wanna get back to the story and I am generally not the type of person who just puts on some headphones and then just sits there and listens to an audiobook, like just like alone in the living room or whatever. I like to be doing something while I'm doing it. So the motivation to keep listening to the audiobook, um, I keep my headphones for the audiobook stuff downstairs in the basement and they're next to my hobby table. And so I'm sitting at my hobby table. I might as well do some hobbying while I'm doing it. So you get that added motivation benefit. Um, the other big benefit to audiobooks is that I never run out of any audiobooks because I use, um, well, I use Audible. Here's a real quick ad. You can get a 30-day free trial of Audible, and in that free trial, you'll get a credit, uh, two actually credits, if you're already an Amazon Prime member, and that's kind of neat. That's a new thing. Uh, they, they're good for whatever premium title or titles that you might like, and those titles are yours to keep if you cancel. So you do the 30-day free trial, and you're like, nope, I'm done. Uh, you, you get to keep those books. You also get access to the Audible Plus catalog of podcasts and audiobooks and Audible Originals. I've listened to some of those Audible Originals, and I, uh, there's a couple of them I really like. Uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, if you remember him, he does a video uh, YouTube thing called uh, Zero Punctuation, where he reviews video games. He's also an author, and I've, a bunch of his books have been on audio, uh, Audible Originals, and I, I dig them quite a bit. You can listen all you want. No credits are needed while you're using your free trial. And then lastly, and I think this is also a really nice thing, they send you a friendly reminder via email before the 30-day trial ends so that you can decide if you want to keep it or not. So it's not just like a gotcha, haha, we got your credit card information. It's you, 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 you get a reminder, which is also really cool. You can go to uh, www.audibletrial.com slash tabletop minions right down there on the bottom of the screen. It's also in the description below. And you can sign up for your free trial and free credit or credits if you're already a Amazon Prime member. This is a, a referral link and it's, uh, you know, it helps out the channel and it also gets you a free 30-day trial and a book or maybe a couple of books. So thanks to the folks over at Audible. So YouTube and streams, different types of streams, live streams, Twitch, whatever, all that kind of stuff. This, I also, while I'm trying to hobby by myself, I can't do. But plenty of folks can, as I've found out over the last almost two years of streaming twice a week on Twitch. People come and they sit and they listen as they're doing their hobbying. They also do it on the Every Other Sunday show that I do here on YouTube. And that's great. I can't do it, though. I can't 
like be working on something, even if it's just a dumb talking head like me sitting there, I still end up have a tendency to focus on it. And then I'm painting and then I'm not paying attention to what I'm painting and it doesn't work out to me. I get too visually focused is what happens. Um, but if you don't have that same problem, there is obviously so, so, so much out there. And uh, if you do that, playlists are also great because then it just shows you a video and when you're done, you don't have to stop and try to find another video. It just takes you to the next one in the playlist. So take a look for that specifically on YouTube. TV shows are also great for some people. Again, not so much for me, but if you can still get your actual work done or even vaguely done while watching TV shows, this is really kind of great because again, there are so many different shows to watch. Even if you like only subscribe to just like one streaming service, like let's say just Netflix or Hulu or something like that, it would take you potentially years to go through all of them. Now, you probably aren't interested in all of them, but even the ones that you are interested in or kind of interested in, you know, it's still gonna take you a long time to get through them. And there are plenty of folks out there who have told me over the years, I just like to turn on something uh, that I've watched a hundred times before. I mean, or, you know, maybe that's hyperbole, but they like to just, I'm like, I've watched Friends, I don't know how many times, I'm just gonna have it on in the background and that works for them. But again, for me personally, I get visually focused and then I'm watching Chandler and, Rachel. I forget who's on that show. And then one of the last media types that you're going to potentially uh, ingest while trying to hobby are movies. Now for me, I enjoy movies too much, uh, like as a medium to do anything else really, while I'm also trying to watch the movie. Like I don't even particularly like to eat while watching the movie because I'm going to miss some audio or something like that. You, you know, you're getting the spaghetti on the fork and you missed the things, you were like doing this. And that. so I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of watching movies while hobbying either or anything. Even movies that I've seen dozens and dozens of times like Robocop, which is one of my favorites, I still want uh, and need to focus on the, the, the actual, the visuals and all the, the whole experience. Other people don't have this same, we can call it a problem, I guess. So what do you do here? I think the important thing is to figure out what kind of building or painting or whatever that you need to do currently. You know, do you have a deadline? you like, I gotta get this done for the game on Saturday or the tournament in two months or whatever the deal is. Or do you just wanna sit down and have a good time like that aforementioned, I got the rest of the day, the rest of the day free to do whatever I want. If you do that, doesn't matter how fast you get things done and you can if you have a really good time kind of slowly sort of working along on some hobby stuff while enjoying the movies that you like or the tv shows or whatever then that's a thing that you should do but again if you are like i'm on a deadline it's important to try to at least figure out what can i do to hit that deadline once you figure out what kind of media helps or hinders your hobby production, you'll know what to use or to stay away from when you sit down next to hobby. When you're like, I gotta get this done, I gotta then just listen to audiobooks or something like that because you know this audiobook is 27 hours and I will just be able to just tear through some cool stuff. On the other hand, if you're like, uh, I need to get this done eventually, but I kind of don't care when and it doesn't really matter, then you can be having on videos in the background, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and sometimes people, again, can just listen to a video and that works great. Other times it's a situation where they, I've seen tons and pictures of people who hobby right in front of their computer and the monitor is right there. And that's fine. I can't do that. Also, I will get paint on the monitor and I don't want to do that. But Generally, I can't do that because I don't like to split my visual focus that way. But for if, if that's a thing that you don't mind doing, and even if it may slow you down or not, definitely head into that direction if it keeps you producing. So what about you? Um, comment below. Let me know what kind of, um, like, what's your favorite go-to as far as type of media when it is time for you to hobby. Maybe it's just like, I just can only listen to classical music or else it's like, I love to watch movies I've never seen before. I mean, that's kind of the spectrum in that situation. But figuring this out can really help you to hit deadlines when you need to hit them, which can lower your stress. Being able to go, I will be able to make this deadline generally lowers a person's stress. But there's nothing worse than sitting down to a fun time of lower stress and then kind of doing your hobby real slowly and then you miss your deadline, which then can raise your stress. You show up to the game and your stuff's not painted or you're like, oh, you know, whatever the deal is. And that's a bummer. Your hobby should be fun and figuring out like which media works best for you in which situation, well, that can even make it even better.